everyone. Today we will talk about Klebsiella. It is a pathogenic bacteria which belongs to Enterosobacteriaceae. Right. Enterosobacteriaceae, it is a large group which uh, includes several bacteria like and E. coli, Serratia, Klebsiella. Right. So this Klebsiella belongs to Enterosobacteriaceae and, the, and, it, and further it is from tribe 5 which is Klebsiella. The tribe Klebsiella consists of four genera. One is Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Hapnia, and Serratia. All these four, they differ from all other tribes, being VP stands for Works Post Cover. VP stands for Works Post Cover. Right, this is a test in which, like, Based on color, what is the end product? Uh, organisms are classified works cross cover negative or positive. Another one is MR, methyl red. Right, methyl red, so MR positive or negative. So they all they differ from VP positive test, but MR negative test. Right. So if we talk about Klebsiella more in detail. So Klebsiella, this species are usually found as common cells. Common cells means they are normally present in our body, right? They are not going to affect us normally, right? But in some cases, they may be pathogenic. Common cells, that they are present as microflora on our body, right? Inside or maybe sometimes on our skin. In human intestines, mainly in human intestine and in saprophytes, sometimes they are present in soil too, right? Saprophyte. That means they are present on the dead decaying matter. They are non-motile. That means they, they can't move. Right. But they are capsulated. That means they have clapsula. No, sorry. They have one capsule. This is clapsula. They will have one thick mucus capsule. Right. Which grows on outer membrane. Yes, this capsule, they, it forms an outer membrane. Large dome-shaped mucoid colonies. This is something sticky. Right. It helps in adherence or phagocytosis, right? Second most populous member of aerobic bacteria flora of the intestine. So that means among aerobes, they are the second, right, in our intestine. They are short, plump and straight rods. They are rods, right? Not that much rod, but longer in size, but too short size, but they are straight. Right. Straight rods like this, but they will not like complete large shape. Important, they are important cause of nosocomial means hospital acquired infection. Hospital acquired infection. Right, they cause pneumonia, UTI, urinary tract infections, pyogenic infections, pyogenic burning, pyogen first forming infections, right? Generally during, after burning. Septicemia, when this, uh, uh, what do you call? In blood, these microbes are present, right? And rarely diarrhea and sometimes diarrhea. So they are associated with these, right? Okay. So capsule, they have, a, we have seen, they have a capsule that which is a mucus covering out there, outside their membrane. This capsular halo is seen prominently in gram strain, right? When this, it will be observed when we will perform gram negative and these are gram negative right these are hello see here that is a clear white zone these are it this indicates that this is because of capsule right because capsule they will not get strained right this bacteria is getting strained and there will be a clear zone which is non strain that is because of capsule right okay capsule is seen in gram strain the genus Klebsiella has two species, one Klebsiella pneumoniae and another one is Klebsiella oxytoca, right? These are the two species and similar to E. coli, Klebsiella species are also lactose fermenters. That means they have tendency to ferment lactose. However, they differ in being non-motile. E. coli is motile because they have a flagella and they, mm, this Klebsiella, they don't have flagella, right? And these are capsulated. How they differ from E. coli? They are capsulated and non-motile, right? And they possess capsular polysaccharide. Polysaccharidic, there are 
uh, what do you call peptidic or uh, this one capsule capsule also um, um, this which is present in um, bacillus anthracis right there it is made up of protein yes if you will see these are how they are growing if we will grow them in agar plates so this large dome shape like this large dome shaped mucoid colony sticky if you will uh, touch it with the uh, inoculation loop they will be sticky a thread a short thread will uh, will be present right and capsular halo if you will see here this capsular halo in microscopy halo that means white zone right if you will see on nutrient agar or blood agar white will see on nutrient agar it will appear like this that means on capsula and these are on blood agar again okay? this one sticky colonies right so biochemical how we can identify them biochemically right capsular pneumonia can be identified by the following properties that is iuct test i for indole test right that means it they will come negative citrase test positive citrase is utilized that means they will be a positive sir because they have tendency to utilize the citrate urea test positive again urea is hydrolyzed triple sugar iron agar test it shows acid acid gas present like h2s present so triple sugar iron agar we use triple sugar right so these tests uh, like the differentiate or uh, these are the trademark for the identifying that's what you call capsule pneumonia the sugar fermentation test ferments more sugars like glucose lactose mannitol and maltose but not sucrose that means capsule pneumonia and capsule they can't uh, what do you call mm, ferment sucrose but they can ferment glucose lactose mannitol and maltose right vp works cross cover test they are positive that means clesla they are vp positive but mr negative right so or most of the organisms if they are like uh, one is positive if they are positive they will be negative and if they are vp negative they will be mr positive and they are methyl right negative right so they are clesla they are vp positive and they are but, but they are mr negative and there are another species we have seen of clepsira but which is clepsira oxytoca it is biochemically similar to clepsira pneumonia but it differs from this one pneumonia by being indole positive so that is there here this one clepsira pneumonia they are indole negative but clepsira oxytoca is indole positive if you will see pathogenesis right how they cause this the disease clepsira clepsira pneumonia it mainly pneumonia it causes pneumonia right that means they are they mainly affects the lungs lungs like part, particular lobes different lobes of the pneumonia that, that's why they are known as for lower pneumonia right clepsira pneumonia has three subspecies further they have three subspecies clepsira pneumonia subspecies pneumonia right it is the most pathogenic of all it is responsible for severe lower pneumonia when they are forming pneumonia in lobes urinary tract infections meningitis in neonates newborn uh, they, they are responsible for meningitis that is inflammation of meninges septicemia they, they will be present in um, blood or they will be producing toxin and pyogenic infections right was forming and such as abscess and wound infections it is frequently it, it frequently colonizes the oropharynx right of hospitalized patient and is a common cause of nosocomial infections most of the hospital strains are multi drug resistant so further if you will see pathogenesis pneumonia tends to be destructive by producing thick mucoid brick red sputum right they produces mucoid brick red sputum they will be present when this patient is affected from this uh, clepsila sometimes the sputum has a thin and current current jelly like appearance right the sputum they will have jelly like appearance sometimes strains can rarely cause diarrhea and have been shown to produce e coli like stable enterotoxin so, that means in some cases they may produce enterotoxin just like e coli we will see further there were two more subspecies one was capsula subspecies subspecies pneumonia right second one is capsula pneumonia subspecies oceanae it is associated with atrophic rhinitis rhinitis runny nose or ozina which is characterized by false smelling there will be bad smelling right smelling nasal discharge like from the this what you call nose a uh, false smell will come it is biochemically inactive right 
that means they won't give any test by chemical test. Another one is third subspecies is Klebsiella pneumonia subspecies rhino. Rhino again nose. Rhino sclerometus. They will form sclero uh, stone like structure, right? In nose. It causes rhino scleroma, a chronic granulomatous hypertrophy of the nose, which is prevalent in southeastern Europe, India, and Central America. It is also biochemically inactive. Virulence factors, that means what are the, uh, what do you call, weapons they have to cause the disease. So first thing is they have capsule. We have seen they have a mucoid capsule which helps them in phagocytosis entering in the body. Mucoid capsule, it is entophagocytic. That means they can't be, like when they are entering our body, there are defenses in our body. So they will engulf them. But um, because of this polysaccharide um, covering, uh, this phagocytic cells, they, um, what do you call these uh, defenses, they can't recognize them, right? And they consider it body cells. So they will pass from there. So the mucoid capsule is antiphagocytic and acts as a major virulence factor. Another one is plasmid exchange. What happens? This clepsilla, they may exchange the plasmid, the pathogenic ones, right? And they may and this in this plasmid, this pathogenicity is present. Clepsilla participates in the exchange of plasmids with other enterobacterium, right? There are different enterobacterium, they, they will there's a tendency to acquire from those other enterobacteria. The plasmid exchange is presumed to be basis for two constant characteristics of Klebsiella species. One, antibiotic resistance, so that if we will acquire this plasmic, uh, plasmid from another enterobacteria, like plasmid which is responsible for antibiotic resistance, so they'll become antibiotic resistance, right? Many strains are highly resistant to most antibiotics. Another one is toxins. If they are getting plasmid for producing toxins, then they will become more pathogenic, right? Toxins, some Klebsiella strains carry plasmid that code for toxins similar to E. coli, heat levile and heat stable toxins, exotoxins, right? This is when, when they will um, get plasmids from other enterosobacters, right? If you will see, this is the capsule of enterosobacteria, they are short, they are not, we have seen, we have, in, initially we have seen, they are plump short rods, like this, other one is, one is complete rod, right, so they are plump short rods, right, this is, and this one is, this is the, what do you call, clepsilla, and this is the covering, what we are calling it, capsule, right, polysaccharide capsule, what is the role, they are in phagocytosis, right, so this will prevent them from our getting phagocytosed right antimicrobial peptides that is human beta defensins lactoferrin complement mediated lysis and optimization right and there is inflammatory response so this helps all these capsule helps them in these right so what what are the clinical symptoms like if a patient will get infected then what are the symptoms we have seen that the, the patient will get pneumonia pneumonia in what will happen in pneumonia there will be cough fever chest pain, there will be production of thick blood tint sputum, that is curent jelly sputum. Lung abscess, there will be formation of abscess in the lungs. Lower pneumonia, in which different lobes will be involved, like necrotic destruction of the alveolar spaces, cavity formation and thick blood tint, viscous sputum production. The prognosis is grave with 50% mortality, that means death rate is very high, up to 50%. Uric tract infections, like dysuria will be there, frequency, urgency, flank pain, and hematuria, urine, blood will be present, right? Septicemia, there will be fever, chills, hypotension, septic shock, wound infection, there will be redness, warm plus swelling, meningitis, mainly in case of neonates, epi epidemic diarrhea in newborns. How to diagnose them in the laboratory? They can be diagnosed by using certain specimens, like if they are involved in urine tract infections, then urine sample, if they are affecting the this, what you call, lung, uh, lungs, right, then pus or this sample, sputum sample, pus, blood, etc., depending on the site of infection where they are infecting. Klebsiella pneumonia shows following biochemical properties. Gram staining, they are gram negative, right, and they are forming clear halo zone like this right this is white white in color right 
is short plum straight gram negative rods about one to two microns this is the size right culture when we grow them in mekongki agar they produce large dome shaped we have seen over here large dome shaped colonies right on mekongki will form large dome shaped mucoi due to capsule and lactose fermentation if if they will ferment lactose they will get and they will appear pink in color right so they are their colonies will appear pink right if they are fermenting lactose okay ferment glucose and lactose and produces acid and gas if they will ferment there will be production of co2 and gas from there so there will be formation of acid and gas they are positive indole positive right indole positive that oxytocin was indole positive citrate utilization they utilize the citrate that means citrate positive urea stress and urea is positive typing based on typing based on based on about 90 capsular antigens there are three types k2 k3 and k21 right so these are pathogenic we can diagnose by typing how to treat by using antibiotics right based on susceptibility testing options may include like we can provide carbapenem meropenem or imipenem we can provide cephalosporins example ceftriaxone and cefepime another one is aminoglycosides example gentamicin there is multi drug resistance strains also which re may require colistin or digicillin there is supportive care we may provide supportive care to the patients like fluke oxygen and management of complications infection control it could be strict hygiene main measures contact precautions and surveillance in healthcare setting environments so all these were about klebsiella pneumonia and klebsiella oxytocin thank you